I grew up in a small country town. Not Paris, not London, not New York. But Ararat. It's got quite a ring to it, hasn't it? I finished my schooling in 1988. I couldn't wait to leave the place. I wanted to see the world and dreamed of becoming a filmmaker or a writer. But I quickly dispelled such dreams. They don't want to hear our story. The arts are for the rich, the educated, those in the big cities. Not for us out here, where it's all footy and beer. Fifteen years later, here I am. A failed five-year relationship and the offer to help prepare the family farm for gradual sell-off. Back where I first took breath. Ararat has an amazing history. In 1857, a group of Chinese, whose ship landed in South Australia to dodge a Victorian tax, found gold in a local stream. Within two months, the area, which was nothing more than a wild, untrodden mountain gorge, supported 50,000 prospectors, including 9,000 Chinese. It must have been true chaos. A tent city formed on the promise of riches, brothels, billiard halls and 500 sly grog outlets. I looked long and hard to find information on the local Aboriginal population. Once the first explorers paved the way in the 1830s, the squatters soon followed, taking land as they pleased. With their hunting grounds gone, the original inhabitants didn't stand a chance. The Aborigine population of the Western District was estimated to number 3,000 before white settlement. By 1852, a decade after the arrival of the pastoralists, there are only 700 Aboriginals left, less than a third of the original number. A census in 1877 revealed only 147 full-blooded Aborigines. That's unbelievable, that within a 30-year period, a whole people and all they held as true had disappeared. My ancestors, Irish immigrants of the Potato Famine, selected land in 1862, and five generations later, Shays still farm around the original settlement block at Three Mile Creek. That's quite an achievement, to have five generations that have continued in the farming tradition, because when it comes to my family, the 140 plus years of tradition ends. None of my four brothers or two sisters have taken on the family farm. Dad never really encouraged us to do so, saying farming was too precarious a career choice. I think his true reasoning is that he believes one must have a passion to be a farmer. He once told me he got a real joy out of turning the sod. It's his life. It's not mine. But despite this, it still hurts to see Dad slowly carve up Shea land and end a tradition.